Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, we had a good day in uh, Egypt and now in Qatar. I had a chance uh, in Egypt, as you know, to see President uh, Sisi, uh, Foreign Minister Abdullahi, uh, the uh, intelligence chief, uh, Abbas Kamal. Uh, and here in Qatar, I was just on the phone with the prime minister who was traveling to uh, Australia, but uh, saw the uh, minister of state, uh, Al Khalifi. Uh, and with uh, our partners in Egypt and Qatar, our message is simple, it's clear, and it's urgent. We need to get the ceasefire and hostage agreement over the finish line, and we need to do it now. Um, time is of the essence. Uh, time is of the essence because with every passing day, the well-being and lives of the hostages are in jeopardy. Time is of the essence because every single day, Women, children, men uh, in Gaza are, are suffering without access to uh, adequate food, medicine, uh, and at risk of being wounded or dying in fighting that they didn't start and they cannot stop. And time is of the essence because with every passing day, there's the danger of escalation in the region, uh, escalation that we've been working to prevent from day one since uh, October 7th. With um, Egypt and with uh, Qatar, we're united in, um, in purpose uh, and united in action. We're working in our different ways to uh, try to ensure that there is not escalation, uh, sending the necessary messages to all of the potential actors, including Iran and including Hezbollah, uh, to avoid taking any steps that could escalate the conflict or spread it. Um, we're united in our work with the parties to try to bring this agreement across the uh, finish line. And uh, Qatar and Egypt in particular are in direct contact with Hamas, uh, working to bring it along uh, as we work to conclude this agreement. Now, as uh, I think everyone remembers, President Biden put out a detailed plan for a ceasefire and the release of hostages uh, in May. The entire world endorsed it. The UN Security Council uh, endorsed it. And since then, uh, we've been working to bring the, uh, the parties along with it. Um, a lot of work went into that. And we got to the point where, as we were working on implementing uh, that plan, it was necessary hearing from both the parties to provide some clarifications, uh, to provide some additional detail. And that's exactly what went into the bridging proposal that our three countries put forward just a little over a week ago. Um, Israel has now accepted that proposal. I heard that directly from Prime Minister Netanyahu yesterday. Uh, and we uh, hope and expect that Hamas will do the same. That's the critical next step. But once that happens, we also have to complete um, the detailed implementation uh, agreements that go along with putting uh, the ceasefire into effect. And uh, there, uh, it's very important that everyone do what's necessary to bring the uh, flexibility to the table, uh, to make sure that we can get uh, the implementation agreed and that the uh, the, the parties to uh, the ceasefire can make good uh, on the commitments that they've made in the agreement. So that's a process that's go ongoing at the same time. We're engaged every single day uh, with Israel and um, our Qatari and Egyptian partners are engaged uh, with Hamas uh, and over the coming days, we are going to do everything possible to, one, get Hamas on board with the bridging proposal, and then to make sure that both parties uh, work on and agree to necessary details of implementation that would allow everything to go forward. So that's where we are, uh, and I just return to uh, what I started with, which is a strong sense, a strong commitment on the part of the United States, Egypt, Qatar, and for that matter, many other countries on the fierce urgency of now. This needs to get done, and it needs to get done in the days ahead, and we will do everything possible uh, to get it across the finish line. Tom Baker. Tom. Mm -hmm. So how can any proposal 
Hmm. Well, Tom, here's what I can say. First, going back to the very early days when we put out the, uh, the so-called Tokyo principles uh, about the future, one of them uh, is very clear that the United States does not accept uh, any long-term occupation of Gaza by, uh, by Israel. Um, more specifically, the agreement is very clear on the schedule and the locations of IDF withdrawals uh, from, from Gaza. And Israel has agreed uh, to that. So that's, uh, that's as much as I know. That's what I'm very clear about. Uh, again, I'm not, gonna, uh, I'm not gonna get into the details of the agreement, but it is laid out in the agreement, an agreement that Israel has endorsed, and it is specific as to the locations and the schedule for withdrawals. Robert. Um, I, 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 uh, I can't speak to, uh, uh, to what he's quoted as, uh, as saying. Uh, I can just speak to what I heard from him directly yesterday uh, when we spent three hours together, including, again, Israel's endorsement of the bridging proposal and thus the, uh, uh, the, the detailed plan. And that plan, uh, among other things, as I said, uh, includes a very clear schedule uh, and, and locations for uh, withdrawals. Uh, but uh, the other thing is, it's so clearly in the interests of all concerned, starting with Israel, to bring this to a close. And I think that was also reflected in the conversation that I had. Uh, the hostages depend on it. The security of the country depends on it. The ability uh, to really ensure that we don't have the conflict spreading to other places, because Gaza is in many ways the key to making sure that we can actually move things in the north, in Lebanon, uh, and Hezbollah, in a better direction. It's the key to helping make sure that we can um, take down the temperature in the Red Sea with the Houthis. It's the key to seeing if we can pursue a normalization agreement between Israel and Saudi Arabia, which both countries remain very interested in. It's uh, the key to um, actually putting everyone, starting with Israel, uh, on a path to a greater peace and uh, security. And of course, it's key to getting the hostages home, which Israelis desperately want to see happen, and we want to see happen. We need to see happen. There are Americans who remain hostage in, in Gaza. And I was very clear about the American interest in making sure that our people come home to their families and that the remains of those who have perished are brought back. Robert. Thank you. Go ahead. Thank you. Robert. If this bridging proposal was endorsed um, and agreed to by both the Egyptians and the Qataris, mm -hmm. can you help us understand how the proposal was advanced over the course of your stop today? And you've received the assurances from Israel, and you've had the support of Egypt and Qatar as negotiating partners for intermediate, intermediaries. Uh, has the needle moved at all when it comes to Hamas? And are you more confident today that they will agree to this proposal than you were when you left Israel? And if I may, mm -hmm. uh, what are your expectations as to the outcomes of talks over the next coming days? When negotiators uh, are set to the yeah. So the bridging proposal that was put forward was put forward on behalf of all three of our countries. The United States put it forward with the full support of Egypt and, and Qatar. And what's happening now is, among other things, um, both Egypt and Qatar, in their engagements with Hamas, making uh, very clear uh, as necessary uh, what's in that proposal, explaining it, as necessary if there's any uh, any confusion so that Hamas fully uh, understands it and um, I, agrees to it. As I said before, the bridging proposal is based on the May, uh, the, the, the late May uh, agreement that we put, that President Biden put out, in, uh, endorsed and incorporated in a UN Security Council resolution. And then we heard from both parties different uh, comments on it. We tried to reflect some of those comments in this bridging proposal. Uh, and a bridge, by definition, <laughs> has uh, two, uh, two parties to it. There's a, uh, there are two points to a, to a bridge. So we've tried to reflect that uh, in the bridging proposal. 
And now the process is making sure that um, Hamas fully under, uh, understands it and, and what's in it. And I believe that um, they, sh again, they should uh, be prepared to endorse it, just as Israel has endorsed it. And then the critical thing is getting um, clear understandings on implementation of the agreement. Uh, and there are some you know, com uh, complicated pieces of business that, that are involved there. That's exactly why it's so important that the uh, negotiators who are working the details of this have maximum flexibility um, from the Israeli government and also from uh, Hamas's leadership so that we can actually bring this to a conclusion, bring it over the finish line. And in this, as I said, the United States, Egypt and Qatar uh, are absolutely united. And but they have a unique role in being able to engage with Hamas. We, of course, are uh, deeply engaged with uh, with Israel and the three of us working together, uh, I believe, can uh, get this to where it needs to go. But as always, um, these things sometimes take more time than you want. What we are all united on is the urgency of the moment. Because, as I said, with every passing day, more bad things can happen to more pe to more good people who don't deserve it. And um, we're united in that, and we're going to continue to uh, to do the work. There's one other thing I should actually have shared with with all of you, which is that, of course, the we were intensely focused on Gaza uh, during this uh, during this visit. Um, but in Egypt, in particular, but also here in Qatar, uh, we had extensive discussions about Sudan. And it's very important uh, that uh, people focus on that, too, because with everything else going on in the world, the worst humanitarian situation in the world right now is in Sudan. There are more people in Sudan who are suffering from fighting, from violence, from lack of access to uh, food uh, and basic humanitarian assistance. And we are very determined to, to uh, try to move that to a better place as well. We. Uh, convene talks in uh, Switzerland that are that are ongoing. At the same time, we've been working very closely with uh, with Egypt, uh, with Saudi Arabia, uh, with the United Arab Emirates, uh, with the African Union, uh, not only to uh, uh, try to get a cessation of hostilities and bring the parties together around that and a way to verify the agreements that they hopefully will reach, but also to get humanitarian assistance into the tens of millions of people who need it. We have an agreement now over the last uh, couple of days that critical access points in Sudan to allow humanitarian assistance to get in uh, will be opened by both the, uh, the, the SAF and the RSF, the two uh, competing uh, parties. And we, we obviously need to see that move forward, but that's critical in bringing life essential assistance to people who desperately need it. And as we're doing that, of course, we're working on trying to get a broader agreement on a cessation of hostilities. And there, again, the work, uh, the coordination with Egypt has been absolutely critical. And I didn't want to uh, leave this without telling you that this is something that we spent uh, a fair bit of time on as well. Thanks, Thanks everyone. Thanks, guys.